Fighting bigotry! Hurtful words can suck our turds, cause it's PC for me! And you! Woo woo! Yeah! Yeah, bro! Yeah! Yeah, PC, bro! Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes, and I have a very special guest with me to, here with me today, Yellow Flash. He, he's obviously, he, he does cover comic books, he covers pop culture, he covers controversy, even delving into a little bit of politics, and we're going to kind of talk about that, that ourselves here today, and uh, very happy to have you with you, uh, have you with me here today. Welcome to the channel, Yellow Flash. Yeah, thanks for having me. Love your channel, man. I've been watching it for a while, and you, I think you do some great content, and I'm, I'm happy to be here. Well, thank you very much. You know, we, we've talked about maybe doing a video together for, for quite a while. Finally, we're going to talk about it. We're we're not going to talk about comics today. Well, maybe a little bit. We're going to be talking kind of the, the weird controversy and everybody's – they're so dialed up right now with all the politics. You've got the election coming around the corner. And I don't know what – everyone's just decided to take, take aim at Chris Pratt, even though he's like the nicest guy in Hollywood. Yeah, he's, he's he's like a really nice guy. He doesn't bother anybody. He never gets political. In fact, I was reading in uh, an article like he has never spoken on the election. Really, he hasn't really said anything. But you're not allowed to just sit around and be apolitical. Not in today's day and age where where everything's falling apart. So everyone's jumping out on the woodwork on him and trying to call him out for being a uh, well. I, they were calling him a. Uh, istophobe and he's a white supremacist and all of this stuff because he didn't say anything. he's never said he's going to vote trump but he's also never said he's going to vote biden so just because he didn't want to go on biden's fundraiser for the avengers um he uh deserves to be canceled did you see the things they were saying about him i, I did i saw the the grace randolph obviously that tweet made the rounds big time which is I don't want to talk about it, but I'm talking about <laughs> yeah. it kind of thing. I'm gonna like, I'm gonna touch on it though. She works for yeah. Rooster Teeth now though, so it makes sense. It's weird. I thought those guys were going under. You know, they apparently are rebranding or something. Now they're the roost. <laughs> they're like the KFC? roost now. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> she just announced that uh, today or yesterday, I saw it on Bounding the Comics, said that she was going to Rooster Teeth. So like, oh, okay. Kind of makes sense now why she's getting a little political. Yeah, she needed to get a little publicity on her name. Obviously, obviously, Chris Pratt is trending on social media. You want to be able to get get some of those views and stuff. But yeah, you know, Chris Pratt is, you know, he's. I remember when he was kind of like the chubby guy on um, was that Parks and Rec? Yeah, he was funny on that show. Yeah, he's absolutely hilarious. Next thing you know, he's a big action star. But he's always been a little bit weird for Hollywood. Just in that, uh, you know, he likes hunting and. He's kind of more about family. He's not really out there doing the the A list superstar life, and I, I that probably just bugs him all that he's not in there, you know, rubbing elbows and kissing everybody's butt, you know. Yeah, I don't, does he even live in Hollywood? Does he live in LA? I don't know. I should have looked into that, and I I didn't even think about it. I wonder if he's even in. Oh, he has to be because he's dating Arnold's daughter. Yeah, or no, he's married to her. Mm -hmm. So before yeah. that, I was married to Anna Ferris. Yep, the, she was in like remember. Uh, what was that scream ripoff scary movie? Uh -huh. She's also <laughs> yeah. one where Ryan Reynolds is in the fat suit. Yeah. Oh, that's a funny movie. He loses one. all that weight and goes back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just friends. I think that one is. Yep. That's actually a funny movie. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a good holiday movie. I'm going to see if I can get my wife to watch that, but you know, get back to Chris Pratt. It, you know, what was strange is you saw like Zoe Saldana. Yeah. They were calling her. Some I have a data racer one one seven who does fantastic work with these collages he makes. I I don't I can't even say I didn't even show him in my video like the stuff they were saying yeah. to her like all kinds of nasty racist stuff. And it's like who are you trying to win over here with these tweets? It's the strangest thing. And she ended up ended up getting it worse than he did. I guess just for supporting him. And I guess because she, I think she's she's um. She's Latino, right? I think she's uh, maybe Latino and black mixed. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's because she's she's mixed race. Yeah. You always get it the worst. Everyone hates you. Yeah, you're <laughs> supposed to fall in line, I guess. You know, they they did that with Ice Cube and Fifty Cent because Ice Cube dared to talk to Trump, so yeah. uh, they're canceling him, calling him, you know, all kinds of nasty stuff too. 
Yeah, so, so yeah, who was it? Uh, yeah, 50 cents. Like, uh, I'm going to be 40 cent or 20 cent if I'm living in New York <laughs> with all these taxes. I'm voting yeah. for Trump, which you don't blame him. You think about it, it's like it was like it's going to be like a 62 percent tax rate, you know, is at the highest levels there. And that's who was the uh, Chelsea Handler's all like pro- trying to propose to him, like, you know, if you if you don't vote for Trump, I was like, Jesus, why, why are we so why is everyone so concerned with who everyone else is voting for? Well, you're supposed to fall in line if you're in entertainment. I mean, anybody it's that doesn't to be a private vote anyway. I know. Well, I mean, there's all kinds of articles. It's so funny about Chris Pratt because he's not, he didn't say anything. That's what. No. And he trended on Twitter for two days. He said nothing. He just didn't want to do a stupid fundraiser. And I don't even think he was the but he only. He never does that. Yeah, he never does it. That's never. Not his brand. He's not Mark Ruffalo. But the funny thing is, I don't think he was the only one not to do it. I don't even well, think he's Brie probably Larson the only one that hunts and says he's a Christian. Yeah. Well, he says, it says, I think all of his profiles say he loves Jesus. Yeah, that's probably the biggest part, right? Yeah. Like, I think right. he was at the an award show and he was telling everybody, like, the three things you need to do and it was all about loving Jesus. Yep. Yeah. Oh, they, this is, uh, so they went after him again a couple months ago because he wanted, he told, he told people to go vote for him in the people choice award or whatever yes. kids choices award as a joke. And he was trolling time, them. Yeah. If you're going to vote for one person this year, like vote for me. <laughs> <laughs> so he got like 30 cancellation articles on him. And even right now there's a bunch of articles. Just say you're a Republican, Chris. Is Chris voting Donald Trump? It's like he's never said anything. If anything, he he probably doesn't like him because of his father-in-law. Arnold doesn't care for him. Arnold's a never Trumper. Yeah, so he probably isn't a big Trump fan. Yeah, but even if he was, like, isn't he? It's his job to make entertaining movies and be funny. And well, it's it's this idea of professionalism too. You know, like he, you're not allowed to even do that. Like, he, if anything, he's doing the right thing and not alienating fans. You know, yeah, hey, I want to keep my brand strong here. I'm just not going to get involved in this crazy election and not ruin my brand and piss people off. And it's so strange, you know, he's like one of the faces of of the MCU. He's certainly the face of the Guardians of the Galaxy, which is a huge part of that. You know, there's they're exploring all the cosmic stuff. With, you know, if anything, he's doing Disney and Marvel a favor. Yeah, yeah, he should, but they, they don't seem to care. I mean, they're going, they're going uh, all in on this upcoming. Phase four, so oh, we'll see if they even keep him around. I, I think they want to. It seems like they want to. What was the run where they had they replaced all the guardians with like there was the humans? No, no, yeah. it was the as guardians of the yeah, galaxy. the as guardians of the galaxy. It seems like they're trying to go that route a little bit, but was that we'll Colin Bun? Yeah, it wasn't a very good run. Nothing Colin Bun does that's superhero no. related is good. He can only write horror horror comics. Well, he, I can't hate on Even him for taking he's... that paycheck, though. You know, but <laughs> it's, it's not. It, it's it wasn't a good run, no. Yeah, that's really where they're going with it. And then to use the Asgard, the well, they keep putting Thor, and I don't think Chris Hemsworth is going to be around after the new Thor. His contract's up. I think they're going to straight up replace him with Lady Thor. And Foster, nice. Yeah, I think he's going to be replaced by her. I mean, they've already been doing it. He's come out and said, I love the picture where she could barely lift that styrofoam hammer. Yeah, they had to have the guy come back and hold her arm (laughs) up. He's like holding her arm up for her. (laughs) You're going to need to put on some muscles. (laughs) I was was reading an article. She was talking about how it's hard to work out for the the role or something. I'm going to pull that back up and probably talk about that this weekend. But she was complaining about working out for, for the Thor role. Yeah. She probably has to put on some muscles. Is uh, you know, I remember Jane Foster in the Thor comics from Jason Aaron, and she was uh, yeah, she's she big, was yoked. And I'll give Brie Larson some credit. At least she got she got pretty pretty defined for a role. I mean, you at least saw her pushing a jeep up uphill. I don't have a problem with Brie Larson. I thought she was a little a little bit um, annoying on her press tour, but yeah, she's just cringy. I don't think she was yeah. very good in the role. I, I didn't, nah. but that's a terrible role. Nobody's yeah. gonna be good on that. <laughs> no, you never know. I'd like to. Uh, the porn star did pretty good. <laughs> I bet she did. She owned it. 
<laughs> yeah. She owned that role. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny. She was taking shots at Brie Larson on social media. It's, it's, it's an easy thing to do. I remember when she made her YouTube channel and everyone got upset because she got so many, because she had so many subscribers. It was like, well, technically all you YouTubers, you made her like a big deal. Like she's controversial. You know, of course people are going to go watch her video. But she, you know, she was like doing yoga and stuff. Well, you know, it's popular content. <laughs> it was popular. I made a couple of uh, Captain Marvel videos. <laughs> well, she she does so much cringy stuff. It's hard not to cover it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so she's you, always you doing some cringy. It. Yeah, but yeah, Chris well, Pratt. Yeah, we'll we'll bring it back to the Chris Pratt and the you know the the weird election stuff. Man, I hope this hope the election goes over smooth and there's a there's a an easy to see result. If this thing ends up dragging out to like January and being dragged, dragged through the courts, yeah, it's going to be a real bummer, man. Because people like Chris Pratt and everybody that was just trying to stay above the fray and stay out of it, they're just going to keep being drowned, and everyone's going to keep trying to, you know, drag them down into it. It sucks. I wanted to tie it to Brie Larson real quick too. I almost forgot to say, like, a lot of the cast was getting heat because they came out and defended. Chris Pratt, but look, where were you at for Brie Larson? <laughs> <laughs> Brie Larson's the real victim here. There's well, a whole, only, everyone just said she was cardboard. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't think she really got, she didn't really get any harassment. She got a lot of criticism and some jokes on her, but she's a, she's a celebrity. It's not like she's, you know, some woman down the street. I mean, if you're in the public eye, you're in the public eye. Everything you do is kind of dissected by people. I mean, you've had like National Enquirer around. They've been doing that for years. Paparazzi yes. people everywhere they go. Anything in an upper profile, you know, it seems like Chris Pratt is handling it well. He's not sitting there like, uh, you know, losing his mind. But I don't know. It's, even in comic books, there's been a couple of articles. Like there's one in like Bleeding Cool. It's like, who from Marvel, like, who, who, what campaign did they support? Then they, they did a big expose that Ike Perlmutter supported Trump. It was like, who, why are we getting into the, these people's personal lives? Who cares? Are oh, people they no longer allowed to do, donate money to, to, to uh, your political campaigns without having it scrutinized and thrown into to the public eye? Well, you remember, they've been doing that at Marvel forever. There was that editor... 2016 election, she's like, well, Alana Smith. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna remember if you voted Trump, win or lose. And they have kind of, I mean, I don't, I can't really think of anybody who's an open conservative in the comic book industry anymore. And if they do, they just hide it. Yeah, I, I know a few it. of them. Uh, we we talk kind of behind the scenes, but now you're not allowed to really talk about it. And that's such a shame. I, I mean, who at the end of the day, you should be able to just get along with people. I wish you know. People could just talk and be cool, and it wouldn't be such a big deal. It's it's so stupid that you can just not say anything, like Chris Pratt, and just get thrown down the drain. Do you it's remember? Um, do you remember? Don't ask, don't tell. Yep. So I was in the military. You know, I'm re I'm retired Air Force. So I was in the military for 20 years, and when I signed up, don't ask, don't tell became law. You know, Bill Clinton, and um, so it was like one of the strangest policies I've ever seen in the military, and it was essentially. You can be gay, but you can't be gay. You know what I mean? Yeah. You could you could be gay, but you couldn't actually be in like a relationship or or uh, any type of acts associated with being gay. It was always the weirdest policy, and you couldn't tell anybody you were gay. And that is essentially what it is to be a conservative in comic books, or really even Hollywood. Almost, you can be conservative, but you can't be conservative. You know what I mean? Yeah. Don't come out and say thanks, Trump. Or no, uh, congratulations, you, or you're you done. can't openly support a, a candidate. You can't openly support uh, beliefs associated, you know that that you you believe in. You can't can't promote them and things like that. You know, Terry Crews is the only guy that I think seems to get away with that. I don't even know if he's conservative. I think he just rationally minded. Yeah, he, he, <laughs> you know, he might like, just be normal and yeah. he, he just he's got he, like a don't give a fuck attitude kind of thing going on. He, he just talks about, you know, hey, let's just all get along. And it's like, oh, that's enough reason to call him a, I, I, I don't want to even say what they call don't him. Don't want to say him, yeah. Yeah. But. Pretty not nice names. Yeah. 
not very nice stuff. And it's so stupid. But yeah, it's like a like, yeah, it feels like don't ask, don't tell from what I was in the military. I was glad when they got rid of that. That was like one of the stupidest pieces of uh of uh of rules that I ever say in the military. Like this doesn't even make any sense, but that's certainly still going on in, in Hollywood. Did you see that there's a bunch of comic pros that were doing like a, a fundraiser on YouTube or something for Biden? Yeah, it got canceled. <laughs> Ended up getting canceled. <laughs> yeah, I did a video on that yesterday. I thought that was hilarious. So like Mark Wade was obviously the biggest name on there. And then like they had Heather Antos on the third bill. Like who who outside of people on YouTube know who Heather Antos is? What well, who's gonna pay paying for their views on politics? It's all over social media. Yeah, like you gave it away exactly. for free. Yeah, you I can go <laughs> I can go see all of your political views on Twitter. Why do I need to pay fifty to five thousand dollars to see or, you talk about it in or a I video? can go Read a humanoid comic for four bucks. <laughs> yeah, you, you get enough. You get enough of their politics in their comics. Not that I have a problem with them, you know, going and uh, fundraising for Biden. But I thought it was funny. Like they thought they were going to make any money. What are you trying to fundraise fifty cents? Like, come on. And yeah, I think that's <laughs> the only one I've seen get canceled out of all the because everybody's coming together for reunions and or re reunion for. There's a happy days reunion for Biden fundraiser. It's like, okay, well, I don't care, but that's the only one I've seen get canceled. And I thought that, that was, I almost, I haven't smoked in years. I almost wanted to light up a cigarette. <laughs> that would <laughs> pour one out for me and for the, for the comic pros Biden tour. You know what I mean? <laughs> Some, uh, what is it? Uh, OE? Yeah. <laughs> pour, pour, some from my, pour some from my dead homies. <laughs> that is some Boone's Farm. Yeah. <laughs> well, you don't want to spill that. That's some good stuff, right? I had Boone's Farm. You know, five bucks, cheap buzz. That is, remember, I remember being 16 years old when you weren't yeah. supposed to be doing that stuff. You go buy that. You remember, like, you would go and buy the big cube of beer. It's like 30 beers for like the price of a 12 pack, and it oh, tasted yeah. terrible. It was a uh, Natty Light. Yep. Natty Light. Or then they had like Miller. The Beast, Old Milwaukee's Best. What was the Miller Light one? It's like uh, natural life? Miller Light. Yeah, High Life. Yeah, yeah that's, good that's stuff. it. <laughs> <laughs> All of those were very prevalent in my household growing up because uh, we were very poor, but we still liked our beer. Yeah, I mean, you get a lot. You get a lot there, a lot of quantity. Yeah, it's it's crazy. I thought it was pretty funny that they, it's like, what? How much are they really going to raise on this? No one's going to be paying these guys to hear what they think about anything, you know? Yeah. It's like Heather, Heather Ontos is third billing. <laughs> I looked at the hashtag too. There was a hashtag for it and there was nobody tweeting about it. I had to go on. Cause you know, they've all blocked me. I think, uh, your, your buddy perch broke that down pretty nicely a long time ago about how many people they've blocked through blockchains. Like, like 35,000. Yeah. <laughs> a ton. And of course I'm on that list. You know, you don't worry. You get there too. Eventually. Oh, I'm blocked by a lot of them. Yeah, they'll come after you too just for not liking their books because they can't, a lot of them can't take any criticism. But, like, uh, you know, I had to go into my other account and look at it, and nobody was talking about it. It was the same five or six people retweeting it and using the hashtag. It just nobody cared. And uh, it was great. Some sweet I music. I think a lot of people are probably fed up with the politics and stuff anyway if you're gonna get something going with politics you probably got to just be a big name like mark white isn't a big name anymore he hasn't done anything in forever no nah. other than I mean, he's got other that than fantastic harass. four book out now that isn't bad but it's not like that selling i thought dan slot was on fantastic four no it's called fantastic four annihilation it's him and um oh man i'm gonna embarrass myself adams neil adams is the art it's actually pretty good it's a huh. little mini series maybe i'll check that out it's way better than Dan Slott's band. Oh, I'm Dan Slott. I don't. I, the taking him off Spider Man really exposed his sales numbers. Oh, that Iron, Man, Iron is, Man run just god awful. It was rough. Yeah, it was really bad. And then I, well, I haven't read his Fantastic Four run. I don't know. I just I don't care for his writing anymore. I had to sit through what was it ten years of him on Spider Man. About that. Yeah, I'm I was done with him. The only no, thing he did that I ever liked was I thought Spider-Verse was pretty good. 
and some of the stuff at the end. And I liked Superior Spider. I'm like one of the only people I think in in the comic community that liked Superior Spider Man. But he was just inserting himself into the character. You are one of the few people that I've heard that say that Doc Ock Spider Man is great. I thought it was different. It was interesting, and I knew he was going to come back. Peter Parker was always going to come back. There's no way they were going to leave him dead. I thought it was there was some interesting stuff there. He's banging out Aunt May. Yeah. There you go. So I, technically, this is a comic book channel. What are you get, What are you reading nowadays? I know you don't cover comic books as much on your channel, but I know you're still reading uh, X Men, right? X Men, I like. So there's a lot of people that don't like X Men either, and there's some stuff I don't like about X Men. But overall, I like the direction. I think it's interesting, like what they're doing. I like that all the X books talk to each other. It's expensive and as annoying it can, as it can be, but I think it that is. that's kind of cool. Um, Are you I liking Tennis Swords? Goes. No, I'm not. I'm skipping that. You're skipping Tennis Swords. Yeah, I don't feel like supporting 22 books, and uh, I don't think Tina Howard is the strongest of and like. Uh, what book was she on? I gave that one Excalibur. up. Excalibur. Yeah, I gave that one up. I didn't think it was that good. So yeah. I don't know. I know you seem to think it's okay from some of the videos I've watched. I like all the stuff until they get to other world. Yeah. I like it. But you know what I'm gonna we do? We do cover it here every every uh weekend here on the channel. Every Sunday we cover all the tennis swords books. I'm gonna pick up the final issue and it'll just catch me up. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> that's then, the way it always works with these events. It's Tennis Swords Creation was the beginning. Tennis Swords Stasis, which comes out next week, is like the midway point. I think that's where the battle starts. And I think the last one is Tennis Swords Destruction. Yeah, I, I just I think that I think that that's a lot of that's a lot of comic a lot of story. So besides uh, X Men, what else do you read? So X Men's pretty good. Uh, Batman, I love and. The Joker War. I think the Joker War is really good, though. I I'm behind two issues. I still haven't read them. I'll oh. probably read those this week. So I haven't. I've I've watched a little bit. I know I know some of the stuff the way it ends, but uh, I've liked it a lot. Joker War definitely good at, feels but, more like Batman now. I you know I just don't always like the pacing what James Tynan does. Yeah, a lot of that's there. Anyone who read his Detective Comics run knows that he can drag some stuff out. But I mm -hmm. think he's improved quite a bit since his Detective Comics run. Some of the stuff's a lot better, and I really did like that run. It's I wanted to see how he would write a solo Batman story. Because if did you read that run? Mm -hmm. yeah, I bowed out, but I, I got through a good portion of it. It was good, but you know it was more so about the Bat Family, and there's a lot of Bat Family stuff on this. But uh, I think he's done great. But then you know we'll see how it holds up over time. I think anybody who read a lot of that Tom King stuff was hungry for anything. So I almost wonder if, you know, once he gets settled in, how good it will be, but we're going to take a two month break. So I was yeah. wonder if I just hungry yeah. for a cracker. <laughs> you have to take a little break <laughs> for future state. Yeah. But um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of good comic books out there. You know, I'm, I'm really enjoying daredevil. Uh, Yellow flash, you know, we're coming up kind of on the end of the time here. I really appreciate you coming on the channel, talking about Chris Pratt and all the, the hate he's getting and then the hate the people that are supporting him are getting and saw the, the nonsense that we're going through uh, right now. Is there anything else that you needed to say? before we? I was going to say if I could plug it, because I don't think it gets enough love is the Power Ranger books are really, really good. Those are about to reboot. They're going to Mighty Morphin and Power Rangers. So it's it's going to keep going. It's not a total reboot. There's going to be two teams. One's going to be the Ranger. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And then they're going to have uh, Jason, Trini, and Zach as the Omega Rangers, and they're going to be in space. Those books, mm -hmm. I think, are great. If you're looking yep. for something that treats Ryan the fan base right? really good, yeah, he's writing it now. All the old stuff's good. You can pick those up in graphic novels. They're fantastic. I think they're the best books out right now. They're my favorite comics. It's my wife's favorite uh, superheroes. Yeah, they're, they're great. If you if you loved the the old show, like – they do such a great job of treating the fans with respect with the, care, the material. They, they keep it. There's nothing like, I haven't really picked up a lot of politics in it. I think they're just straight fun. Nice. Yeah. I, I uh, everyone talks about, especially the shattered grid. That's everyone talks about shattered. Oh, grid. really good. Great, yep. great stuff. All right, buddy. Well, I appreciate you coming on the channel, talking about this stuff and uh, I'll definitely see you around. Yeah, for sure, man. Thanks for having me.